So you know you want to be an instructional designer, but when you close your eyes to envision what that may look like, you draw a blank. Well, you're not alone. A lot of the aspiring instructional designers we've talked to feel like they're missing that clear picture of what it actually means to be an instructional designer day to day. Well, if you're like them, no need to wonder. I've got you covered. Stay tuned and we're going to take a look at what an instructional designer does throughout the month and we'll even dig in to see what a typical day may look like. Hey there, it's Sabrina. You may already know that instructional design is so much more than e-learning, right? There's conducting needs analysis and meeting with stakeholders and evaluating learning experiences and so much more. But how does that all fit in to the day-to-day -day and even week-to-week -week as an instructional designer on the job? Well, we surveyed over a thousand instructional designers to find out exactly that. What does their job look like? What tasks are they working on daily, weekly, monthly? But don't worry, I'm not going to read a bunch of statistics to you. Instead, let me tell you a story about Jesse. Jesse is an instructional designer who just completed their first year in the field. Jesse's actually a fictional character, but we're going to use them to represent the majority of our survey respondents. And we're going to look at what a typical month would look like for them. And then we'll zoom in and look at what is what does a typical day look like? Let's get into it. Let's imagine Jesse starting a new project for their company and we'll see what a month of tasks looks like for them. Now, it's pretty common for instructional designers to work on more than one project at a time. So to keep things organized for us in this story, I'll refer to them as project one and project two. To start in this month with project one in week one, Jesse is going to attend a project kickoff meeting where they'll learn more about the training requests and the business goals. At this kickoff meeting, Jesse meets with the project manager, the project owner, and a subject matter expert. Like any good instructional designer, Jesse doesn't just start developing a learning experience, they conduct a needs assessment. This needs assessment is going to consist of gathering new and existing data, interviewing target audiences, and assessing what training has already been completed. Jesse does all of this to figure out what the root cause of this problem could be. If you want to know what kinds of questions you should ask to find the true performance problem when you receive a training request, be sure to check out the last video I did on how to solve the most common instructional design problems. All right, that wraps up week one. Now it's time for week two. Of course, Jesse can't just jump back into project one because we're waiting on the data to come in. So during week two, Jesse works on project two. And project two was started about a month ago, so now Jesse's ready to start working on the storyboard. We learned that with our survey data, that 29.2% of people said they work on storyboards on a monthly basis. We're just behind that. 27% of people said that they work on their storyboards on a weekly basis. So you can definitely count on storyboarding being a part of your instructional design process, um, no matter <laughs> What, what kinds of things you're working on, you're probably going to work on a storyboard also. Now, part of writing a storyboard and even just a course outline is gathering that data. So in week two, Jesse researches content and reviews documents sent over by the subject matter expert, doing all of this to make sure that the content within the course that they're building is relevant. We also found from the survey data that um, researching content and reviewing the subject, the stuff sent over by the subject matter expert was the second most time, cons time consuming task. So week two is probably a really good snapshot of what you can expect some of your daily tasks to be. Writing storyboards and researching content and reviewing documents sent over by the subject matter expert. Also within week two, Jesse completes that storyboard for project two and submits it for feedback. All of that to wrap up project two and week two. <laughs> now we're ready for week three. In week three, we get some of that needs assessment data from project one back. So Jesse is ready to start looking into that. And Jesse starts looking for trends within that data, analyzing it. So still not ready to develop anything for project one. We're still doing that needs assessment and needs analysis by looking into the data and trying to figure out what may or may not be causing the problem. Next, with a solid understanding of the business goals, stakeholders' desires, and what the data shows, Jesse attends a meeting with stakeholders to recommend solutions. And these can be learning solutions and non-learning solutions. And these are all based on, of, based on the data from the needs analysis. Digging through the data and coming up with these solutions takes a, quite a bit of time. So that's gonna wrap up week three for us. Now let's look at Jesse's week four. 
the feedback for projects two storyboard is in and now Jesse is ready to start developing the e-learning for project two and making his project come to life. The other thing that happens in week four is stakeholders have accepted Jesse's proposals, different solutions. And so now Jesse is ready to start working on those design docs and writing learning objectives. If you want to learn how to write effective learning objectives that are aligned with the business goals, be sure to check out the video that Kristen just did last week. We'll make sure to link it down in the description below. And that's going to wrap up our month with Jesse. So we've got to see a couple different kinds of tasks. And these were all again, based on the data from the survey that we received. But some of these tasks may happen a little bit quicker or some tasks may have been sent to other teammates or team members, which is why we didn't see Jesse doing everything. Um, and that's probably going to be the case for you as well. But I want to ask you, what did you notice about the tasks that Jesse was working on? Maybe you noticed that Jesse wasn't just working on e-learning, but there was a mix of creative tasks and meetings with stakeholders. And that's really the true picture of instructional design. You're going to be doing a whole lot of different things, but how they fit in is going to depend on your organization. With this big picture of what a month on the job can look like, let's zoom in and take a look to see what a day may look like. You could ask 10 instructional designers what they did today, and although there may be some similarities, I bet you get very different answers. And actually, out of curiosity, if you're an instructional designer, down in the comments below, let us know what a typical day looks like for you on the job. In our scenario, we saw Jesse only work on e-learning in week four, but the truth is from the survey data that we saw, actually 33% of people said that they they're developing e-learning on a daily basis, where just over 27% of people said they develop e-learning weekly. We also saw in the survey that the majority of people work on their LMS on a daily basis also. So we didn't see that in Jesse's month, but we can definitely expect that to be a task that he would be working on more often. In fact, let's go ahead and use that data, this new data, to plan what a day may look like for Jesse. So Jesse's day as an instructional designer may start with <clears throat> that early morning checking emails and messages on slack getting caught up on all of those things then spends the next hour checking that the e-learning is properly working on the lms again most people said they do this on the daily so we can expect this to be a daily task for jesse as well then from 10 to 12 jesse is going to be conducting research and reviewing any materials sent over from the SME. like i said before that was like the number two most common task um, most time consuming task reported on the survey then of course jesse's got to take a lunch break taking a break is always super important it's going to help your productivity so make sure you schedule breaks into your day after that break Jesse is going to attend a meeting with SME. This was something we also saw people doing weekly or monthly, depending on um, just what their role is at the time. And then we saw that developing e-learning takes up the most time in someone's day, and it is a task that people are working on most often. So Jesse would round out his day by developing e-learning. Now, I think I've mentioned it before, but I'm a former math teacher, so looking at the data is always super interesting to me. And one of the things that I found really interesting was when we broke down the data by years in the field. <clears throat> so we broke it down by like zero to three years, four to eight years, and nine plus years as instructional designers. There really wasn't that much difference in the types of tasks people were doing for those who said their role was instructional designer. Instructional designers were, um, developing e-learning and checking their LMS on a daily basis, and then meeting with SMEs and writing storyboards or scripts on a weekly basis. That was consistent throughout the different years of experience. As we followed Jesse through a month on the job and even took a sneak peek into what a typical day may look like for them, everything was pretty smooth sailing. Your daily tasks may look a bit different, but one thing every job has in common, no matter the field, is obstacles. And I don't say that to scare you, that's just the reality, right? Any job you, you, you're you in, you're going to face some obstacles. But knowing how to overcome those obstacles is what's going to help you be successful in your role. So join us next Thursday, July 25th at 10 a.m. Pacific time for a live event where we're going to speak with instructional designers who've been in the field for a bit, and they're going to tell us about their experience, obstacles they faced on the job, and how they overcame them. 
At the end of the event, there will be some time to ask some questions. So if you've been wondering what kind of problems do instructional designers run into, join us at the live event and bring those questions. If you found this video to be helpful in knowing what an instructional designer does, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more instructional design content. And I hope to see you at the live event. Bye.